fiery horse with the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty hi Silver, the Lone Ranger. discovered in the Black Hills, a new wave of emigration swept into the western United States. Along with the honest settlers came gamblers, criminals, and confidence men, and the mining towns ran wide open. It was in the hills that the Lone Ranger led the fight against the powerful and ruthless Drexel Syndicate, and it was only his strength and courage that made possible the victory of right over might. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. We're heading for Deadwood. Hail, Silver. Hoy! The Lone Ranger and Tonto reined up at the side of the trail on the ridge above Deadwood. The setting sun was at their backs and flashed from the silver-mounted bridle of the horseman who rode toward them. It's Ted Lawson, all right, Kimosabe. Uh, him not know you... Better you have gun ready. The sun's in his eyes. He won't be able to see our faces until he gets right up to us. Howdy! Right up. Whoa, whoa there, boy. Whoa, whoa there, whoa. Who is it? I can't go... Well, you missed. Don't go for your gun. You're an outlaw and an engine. <laughs> well, you two are running into bad luck. I haven't got an ounce of gold dust on me. Yeah, this isn't a holdup. And what's the idea of the mask and the gun? This lone ranger. Him wear mask all time. The gun's to keep you from going for your own. Now, we're friendly, Ted. We only want to ask you a few questions. You know who I am? Yes. You're a surveyor and you work for the Drexel Mining Company. Yeah. Well, I've heard of you too, but what do you want me to tell you? You've been surveying all of the syndicate's property in the Black Hills, haven't you? That's right. Just finished up with a job today. I'm on my way back to the office to report to Mr. Beasley. He's the agent. Well, uh, did you have any trouble? Trouble? Yes, with the miners. (laughs) Why should I? They must have known what you were doing... They must have seen where you were running your line. Oh, now I get you. It's possible that when you file your report with the land office, they may have to restake their claims and lose part of their land. It's possible, but that isn't the way it's going to happen. They'll gain land instead of losing it. How do you mean? It's the Drexel stakes that we're off. Drexel's going to lose a few feet from nearly every one of our claims. He won't like that. Yeah, what's a few feet to a big man like him? Why, I'll bet that Beasley doesn't even tell him about it. Didn't he order the survey? Sure, but that's just routine. With all his holdings, he isn't going to take a chance on a lawsuit. You seem to have a high opinion of Clark Drexel. Well, I don't know him personally at all, but you've got to admit he's important. He owns a lot more land around here than anybody else. Yes, he owns a lot, and he wants more. Well? Perhaps he doesn't want to buy it. How else would he get it? Ground's all been claimed. Beasley might have some idea about that, but I don't think you have, Ted. Hmm? You've told me all I want to know. Thanks and adios. Wait a minute. Come on, Silver. Get him up. That's fine, Ted. I'll file the report for the land office tomorrow. Well, this means the boys and I are out of a job, doesn't it? Well, there's no more surveying to do around here. <laughs> Here's your pay. 
And the uh, pay for the crew. They'll be getting into town tomorrow morning. Uh, I was sort of hoping that... Uh, hoping what? Well, that Mr. Drexel might have some other work for us. But if he hasn't, that's all there's to it. Maybe some of the other big mine owners around here could use it. <laughs> well, sooner or later, they've got to get... <laughs> Ted, <laughs> you don't suppose that when Mr. Drexel finds a good man, he <laughs> lets him get away so easy, do you? <laughs> What's that? But there's no more work around here. No, but we have other property. You're uh, heading for Virginia City, Ted. Virginia City? Yep. I got the order straight from Drexel himself. Report to Collins just as soon as you can make it. Well, what about the boys? Well, they go with you if you want them. Well, I sure do. Yeah. Here's some more money to cover your pay while you travel. Oh, you don't have to pay us when we aren't working? When you work for Drexel, you work for him all the time. But I... Now I got my orders and I'm carrying them out. <laughs> it's certainly fine of Mr. Drexel. You won't regret tying up with us. Now, what do you say we ramble over to the cafe and have a drink to Mr. Drexel? And the Drexel Mining Syndicate. Well, I'll walk that far with you, but I'm going on to the barber shop and have a bath. <laughs> they sure named this country right when they called it the Black Hills. <laughs> hello, Dan. Yeah. Was that Breed across the street saying hello to you? No, no, my name isn't Dan. <laughs> well, neither's mine. He must have mistaken me for somebody. <laughs> no. He mistook you. He did? You can't blame him either. Dirtied up the way you are, you're the image of Dan Carrigan. Who's he? He's one tough hombre. <laughs> yes, sir. The more I look at you, the more alike you seem. Uh, you got uh, plenty of identification, Ted? Well, I got papers, sure. Don't leave them home. Huh. Some sheriff's liable to take one look at you and slap you in jail. <laughs> That chance greeting gave Beasley an idea. Ted Lawson and his crew started for Virginia City the following day. But the day after that, Ted was apparently back in Deadwood. The sheriff stopped him in front of the Drexel office. You, where do you think you're going? Well, I'm just going in to see my boss. Your boss? That's what I said. You're coming down to my office. I've got some questions to ask you about that hole up on the hill trail. Well, there's some mistake. There's no mistake. You're Karen Dean. Don't try to tell me different. I'm Ted Lawson. What's that? I'm Ted Lawson. I can prove it. <laughs> I told you, Sheriff. <laughs> what are you laughing about, Beasley? <laughs> he sure looks like Dan Carradine, doesn't he? He is Carradine. Now, you take a look at these letters and these papers. That's all right, Sheriff. His name is Ted Lawson, and he's a surveyor. He works for the company. Yes, I heard about your surveyor. He left for Virginia City yesterday. I sent after him. He's needed here. If I was an outlaw, do you think I'd be walking up the main street of Deadwood in broad daylight? Dan's done it. We haven't enough proof against him to put him in jail. He knows it. Well, I'm not Dan. You're a dead ringer for him. I can't help that. Well, I guess maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I should apologize. That's all right. But Dan's somewhere around here. And even if I don't have proof against him, there's other lawmen who have. I'm going to write to the sheriff of Pierre today. That's fine. Now mark my words. He'll be in jail before the month's out. You can't put him there too fast to suit me. Huh? Oh, yes, I see what you mean. There's been others who thought you were Dan. A few. I didn't know what it was all about until Beasley figured it out. Come to think about it, though, I never did see Dan when his clothes were clean or when he didn't need a shave. I guess you're lost and all right. Uh, if you don't mind, I want to keep that proof. <laughs> oh, yeah, your papers. Thanks. Well, sir, do apologize. So long, Sheriff. Come on inside. I don't like this. You're getting a thousand dollars when the job's done. But how long is it going to take? Oh, a few weeks, that's all. Weeks? Well, what's the matter with that? You're a lot safer carrying those papers and shaving every day than you would be hiding out in the Badlands. Now, come on. I've got to take you through that report again so you won't make any mistakes. <laughs> Hank Oliver's claim was next to the Drexel Holdings on Windy Ridge. And when he came home that night after buying some supplies in town, his wife knew at once that something was wrong. Lane's 
six, Hank. You knock the door off its hinges, slamming it there. Of him. all the low-down, crooked coyotes. You talking to me by any chance? He's crooked, you hear me? And that Beasley's no better. Beasley's no better than who? Ted Lawson. What are you talking about? Ted Lawson's a fine young man. I swear to goodness, I enjoyed his company a whole lot when he was up here. He's a crook. He's a polecat. He's a no now good... Now, you just calm down and tell me what this is all about. Half my claim they want. They're going to take the best half of my claim away from me and hand me 200 yards to the west that hasn't got an ounce of pay dirt on it. You're talking wild. I'm telling you the truth. That's what they're trying to do. Ted Lawson? Lawson and Beasley. But they can't. Well, they're going to law about it and they'll win. How can I fight them? I can't pull up stakes and go into Pierre and hire a lawyer. Where'd the money come from? How can they lay claim to your land? That survey Lawson was making. According to him, every line on this ridge has got to be moved 200 yards to the west. And that gives Drexel all my pay dirt. The figures are down there in black and white, and he swore to them. And I'm not the only one who'll be losing good land. There's Eddie Southern over in Banjo Creek, and Pete Wilkins, and Norm Lacey, and all but those... But, Hank, if the figures are right, there's nothing you can do about it, is there? They aren't right. It's nothing but a crooked scheme. Can you prove it? Not without hiring a surveyor myself. Well, go ahead and have one. There isn't another one around here, and even if there was, I couldn't pay him. There's that case in court to think about, too. You're panning out gold every day, Hank. Well, the first thing Beasley will do will be to get an injunction and stop me. Don't you understand, Martha? It's all a trick. In a few days, Beasley will come around and offer to buy that 200 yards for next to nothing. I've heard about the way the Drexel Company works, and there's no way a small miner like me can fight against them. Hmm. There might be somebody who could help you. Who? Oh. That masked man they call the Lone Ranger. I've heard tell he was somewhere in the hills. Uh, there's nothing or nobody can help us, Martha. We're going to lose that land as sure as Beasley and Lawson deserve to be in jail. It doesn't seem possible, Tonto. But me hear plenty talk in cafe. Beasley go to court. I believe that all right. It's Ted Lawson. Ah, him swear. He told us that Drexel would be the one to lose by the survey. Maybe him tell lie now. You're a good judge of character, Kimosabe. Did he impress you as a type of man who would lend himself to a crooked scheme? Mm, no. Well, I feel the same way about it. And yet he either lied to us before or he's lying now. Something strange about the whole affair. Ah. Why did he start out for Virginia City and then come back without his men? Beasley sent for him. If Beasley needed him... Why did he let him go in the first place? Mm, Tonto not know. There's only one person who can tell us. That's Lawson himself. Come on, we're riding into town. <laughs> I got to hand it to you, Beasley. You're a smart hombre. Hey, you'd better lay off that stuff. We got to celebrate, don't we? It isn't over yet. No hitches so far. I didn't make any mistakes, did I? Yeah, you will if you don't keep away from that bottle. Uh, we got to celebrate. Hey, what the... Hello, Beasley. A mask man. There's an engine in the doorway. Well, friends of yours, Beasley? What do you want? You sure got a lot of outlaw friends. Shut up. Don't you remember me, Lawson? Never saw you before in my life. But if you're a friend of Beasley's, you're a friend of mine. Sit down and have a drink. That's all we have to hear, Tonto. The rest is simple. Ah. What's the matter with him? Listen. They're riding off. We got into him. He must have met Lawson someplace. And when you said you'd never seen him before, he... I wonder if he suspects who you really are. Uh, what's the difference what a masked man suspects? He's just as much crook as I am. You fool, that was a lone ranger. Huh? He'll go after Ted. He'll bring him back, and if Ted gets a look at the way I've changed his figures... Did, did you say the lone ranger? Yes. Now listen to me. I've got an idea. I've got an idea that'll put Ted behind bars. What if that masked hombre is... And if he tries to interfere, he'll pay for it with his life. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode through the night on the trail to Virginia City. At daybreak, they stopped to eat, and then once more they were in the saddle. Steady, Silver. Steady, boy. Uh, Keenest Hardy. Yes, Tonto? Maybe we not find Lawson. You still think it was Lawson we saw last night, don't you? Uh, maybe so. No, it was Dan Carradine. Well, you told me yourself that the sheriff tried to arrest him. Him show paper to sheriff. Now, they could have been forged. They must have been. Ted Lawson is honest. So Beasley got him out of the way by sending him to Virginia City. Then he took advantage of Dan Carradine's resemblance and brought him in to take Lawson's place. Uh. We ride fast. We'll catch up with him either tonight or tomorrow. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Just come. That night in Deadwood, Beasley and Dan Carradine completed their plans. You got everything straight? I guess so. But I didn't like it when I started out on this job. I don't like it anymore now. It's getting worse instead of better. You'll be through after tonight. If I get out of town alive... I'll make sure the sheriff don't start after you too soon. That's easy to say. And once you're out of town, you're Dan Carradine again. The posse won't be looking for you. I still look like Lawson, and they'll shoot on sight. Yeah. You're an old hand. You've made getaways before. Mm. You might double-cross me. Not a chance. That'd spoil everything for me if you were caught. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. And remember, all the gold you take tonight is yours. How much you got in the safe? Oh, there's over a thousand dollars worth. Well, add up to the ante some. After I make my getaway, I'd... Clear out of the country. Go to California, New Orleans. Get as far away as you can. Must be the sheriff now. Start yelling. You're only the manager here. It was Drexel who hired me, and he's the only one who can fire me. Get out. That's enough. I'll let him in. You'll pay for this, Beasley. Evening, Sheriff. I'm glad you got here so quick. What's wrong? Oh, so you're getting protection from the law, huh? My advice to you is to get out of here and get out of town. You don't scare me. Good night, Sheriff. What's the row about? You remember how you took him for Dan Carradine yesterday? Yeah. He might just as well be. He's a crook. You mean that? I caught him trying to trying to lift some gold dust from the safe. Then I'll arrest him. No, no, I don't I don't want you to do that. You see, he didn't get away with it, and it's only my word against his that he tried. Well, why did you send for me if you aren't going to press charges? I want protection. You heard the way he was talking. You fired him, huh? Yeah, I fired him. Drexel will back me up no matter what he says. He sure ought to. Ted may try to get even, though, and well, I don't want to stop lead. You think there's a chance he might go that far? I sure do. I'll have a word with him. Good. All you have to do is... Sheriff, he's back. Yeah. And I got you both covered. Reach. It's a holdup. I'll just take your gun, Sheriff. You'll let in jail for this. You'll have to catch me first. Don't worry about that. You, Beasley, clean out the safe pronto. Don't shoot. And hurry up. And don't try to hold anything back. You, you want the papers, too? Don't be a fool. I want gold dust, and I want all of it. I'm calling on you to give yourself up, Lawson. <laughs> the minute you go out that door, I'll be after you. There'll be a posse on your trail before you get a mile from town. And maybe i better put a bullet through you to slow you up. A killer, huh? I'm taking that gold, and nothing's going to stop me. Here you are. Now, don't make a move, either of you. Try to follow me, Sheriff, and you'll stop lead. I told you I'd get even, Beasley. Where are you? Don't move. Come on. Sheriff. What's the matter? I'm sick. It's, it's my heart. I thought he was going to shoot. Quick. Get me a glass of water. Put yourself together, man. He's getting away. Water. Water. I... Look out. You're going to fall. Uh, oh. Here, sit down. Take it easy. Water. Whiskey's better. Here, drink this. Oh. How's that? I'm some better, I guess. You sure picked a fine time to get sick. You'll make it out of town. And you might even make the Badlands before I get the posse together. Go, go on. I am. My orders are going to be shoot on sight. Fifteen minutes later, the sheriff's posse raced out of town. But Dan knew the country well. With the start Beasley had given him, he was able to reach the Badlands ahead of them. Then through one canyon after another, he guided his mount without leaving any trail. He was safe from pursuit, but suddenly... His horse stumbled and fell. Dan was thrown clear and was on his feet in a flash. So was the Mustang, but his left foreleg had been lamed. Of all the rotten luck. Somehow, I'll have to get back to town and find another horse. The 
the sheriff's posse returned to Deadwood at dawn. And meanwhile, miles to the west, the Lone Ranger, Tonto, and Ted Lawson were heading in the same direction. There's only one thing I can't believe. What's that, Ted? If Drexel had anything to do with this. We can't prove it. Your testimony will send Beasley to jail. That's certain. How long before we get there? Not before sunset. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Get up, boy. <laughs> Night had fallen when they reined up outside the town. Steady, Silver. Oh, steady, oh, steady. Oh, steady. It's still early, Ted. You may be able to find the sheriff at his office. What about you? Aren't you coming with me? There's no need of that. And Tonto and I want to be sure that Dan Carradine doesn't escape. You know where to find him? We know where he's been living. Maybe he's left town. If he has, we'll have to get after him. And you won't need us to save the miner's land and put Beasley where he belongs. I'll see you later. Get up there, boy. that moment in Beasley's office. What did you come back here for? You've got to get me a horse. Mine's gone lame. If anyone sees you. I know. That's why I haven't tried to get one myself. You've got to do it. You sure nobody's seen you already? I'm sure. Hurry up. Don't move outside this office. I'll put out the lamp. I'll be back in five minutes. Ranger and Tonto found Dan's cabin dark and deserted. Then the Indian headed for the cafes while the masked man followed him toward the center of town, keeping to the rear of the buildings in the main street. He waited in the shadows of some trees near the back entrance of the hotel. The strident voices of the miners reached him from the street. They must have learned how Beasley tried to trick them. They may be starting for his office. Steady, Silver. Steady, boy. Quiet. There it is. Down there, and that looks like somebody out in the back of it. Yes, he's mounting a horse. I wonder if that could... There he goes. Same size and build as Dan. Perhaps I'd better... It's all right, Silver. Steady. Steady, boy. Here comes Donald now. Hi, ye. What's all the excitement about? Sheriff, arrest Ted. Kimosabe, what's that? Him say Ted hold up Beasley last night. It's a frame up. Huh. Well, we're the only alibi he has. That's right. You go to Sheriff and tell him? No, no, we can't, Tonto. Now, let me see. That fourth building. No, the fifth one to the west. It extends back a little farther than the rest. Look, isn't that Beasley's office? Ah. Uh, well, I just saw a man right away from there a moment ago. In the moonlight, he looked like Dan. The fellas say Dan ran out of town last night with posse after him. Well, he may have come back again. You can pick up the trail, Tonto, and we've got to make sure. Uh, come on, Silver, get him out to scout. hard to follow the trail through the back section of the town and up the ridge. But once the open country beyond was reached, the Lone Ranger and Tonto called on Silver and Skull for their greatest speed. Ahead of them, they could see a single rider. Come on, Silver! Can ride to that land! Faster, boy! Faster! An hour later, Beasley was summoned to the sheriff's office. There he met Ted Lawson face to face. What's the matter, Sheriff? Why isn't that man in a cell? He has been. And he'll be going back there before long. Oh, why'd you send for me? You know I wasn't in Deadwood last night, Beasley. So that's your story. Won't do him any good. I saw you with my own eyes, mister. I swear it. I was 70 miles from here. Never mind, never mind. What about your other story? I haven't been here for four days. You can skip that part of it. After I left town, Beasley changed the figures of my survey. He's trying to cheat the miners out of their land. What have you got to say to that, Beasley? It's nothing but a lie. Just trying to get even some more. That's what I figured. I handed in his report the way he gave it to me. If there's anything wrong with it, he's been up to some more crooked business, that's all. Won't you listen to me, Chef? I haven't been here for the past four days. It was Dan Carradine who was taking my place. Come on. You're going back to your cell. Not so fast, Sheriff. You're covered. Uh, a mass man. That's the Lone Ranger. He's the one who brought me back. Will he believe you, Ted? No. Did you tell him about Carradine? I didn't do any good. And suppose you listen for a few minutes, Sheriff. Beasley and I are going to have a talk. You, uh, you want to talk to me? Yes. There was a man who rode away from the back of your office about an hour ago. Was there? Otto and I followed him. We found his camp in the Badlands. We saw the gold that was stolen from you last night. Well, that's, that's, that's fine. 
Must have been some hombre who was working with Ted. Did you capture him? We're going to let Beasley have a hand in that. He'll ride with your posse when we lead you back to the camp. Let's go. No, not me. Why not? I, uh, I'm not much of a hand with a gun. There's one thing I should tell you. The man we saw was Dan Carradine. Was it? If you haven't had any dealings with him lately... I haven't. Then you've got nothing to be afraid of. But if Ted's story is true... No. If you hired Dan to take his place and arrange that hold-up last night to get Ted in bad with the law... No, no. Then you showed up with a posse. Dan would think you double-crossed him. He'd aim for you first. And Dan's a good shot, Beasley. I, I don't know anything about him. I, I never saw him in my life. The only way you can prove that is to ride with us. No, I can't. You better. I've been taking your word for too much. You won't be hurt if Dan doesn't know you. All right. All right, then he does know me. Then you're the one who's been lying. And Ted here is innocent. All right, only don't make me ride out there with you. He'd kill me. You admit you hired him. I'll admit everything, but I haven't broken any law. You can't arrest me. How about that, Sheriff? You can get six months for fraud. And that don't seem half enough. It will to Beasley when he meets his cellmate. Bring him in now, Toto. Uh, you move along there. It's killing me. You had him outside all the time. You tricked me. You had him prisoner already. And now you're a prisoner, too. Take good care of him, Sheriff. I yes, sure will. Come along, Toto. Uh, so long. You sure fix things up. Steady, big boy. Adios. Come on, Silver. Get him up, town. Get him up, town. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 